was brought to us by uh, growers. Um, and in fact, the, one of the persons that made the discovery um, is, is the one that brought it to the center as a recommendation for um, conducting the study. Uh, my understanding of the story was it was another one of those mistakes that led to a significant increase in yield. And so the study was designed to determine um, if that response was real. Um, with us today to present this particular study is uh, Lyle Bjornstedt. He, uh, he also represents um, Wyoming um, on the Western Sugar Board for um, R&D. And um, the, just a, a great producer. This is an example of um, a project where there's some leverage behind it. Uh, the the uh, research board for Western Sugar is funding this and um, there's some others that are interested in funding it primarily because once you pull the resources together you can do much more with it. So I'm going to turn it over to Lyle for his comments about this particular study. Well as, as Brett said we had an oops. We were delivered some fertilizer and we thought it had phosphorus and nitrogen mixed together. Well it turned out it was just phosphorus and I put it down and I put down about 300 units of phosphate on that field and about 30 units of nitrogen with that. And I was watching the field and commenting on how what nice it looked and how it was the best looking field we had and we followed it through and then I discovered what happened. And it was a little too late to put nitrogen on it and it did get a little short on nitrogen later in the year but that still field still yielded 30 tons per acre with very little nitrogen so, and the, so the phosphate made a big difference and in talking to different growers it looks like we're seeing a bit of a phosphate deficiency in our sugar beets since we're having such high, high or better yields than we've had in the past so we kind of put this study together. We got Bart Stevens out of uh, Montana to come down and help us with that. Abdul is the lead investigator on it. Mike's been working on it. We've uh, funded this through Western Sugar. And what we do is every grower in Western Sugar pays a five cent checkout, basically. It's a research dues that they pay. They pay a five cent per ton fee and we disseminate that in January to different uh, universities and ARS and whatnot. We spend just about $300,000 a year on research from Western Sugar. If you include the variety trials and the in-house trials that we run through Western Sugar, we're spending just about $650,000 a year on research. So we're really committed to research on sugar beets. Uh, I'm going to let Mike describe what this trial is really all about. He's more intimately involved in it than I am. Uh, there's different uh, phosphate rates. There's uh, Avail is out there. It's a phosphorus enhancer. We're seeing if we can uh, make a difference, maybe lower our nitrogen rates, or at least see where our economic threshold is on phosphorus. So I'm going to let Mike talk about it. Thank you. Large study. You can see the corner posts in it. Um, there's a lot of plots out here. Uh, um, basically what we uh, did was looked at several phosphorus sources. So we have uh, um, um, 1137, a, a liquid source with and without a veil. And we also have the standard uh, monoammonium phosphate, 1152 is a dry source with and without a veil. And then um, our fifth uh, treatment is um, the liquid phosphate with the addition of a pop-up treatment with the seed. Um, I should clarify the, the dry um, product, 1152, was broadcast. The, the liquid fertilizer was uh, knifed in at bedding, um, two inches over and three inches down um, to the dry side of the road. Um, and when, then with, within each of those uh, phosphorus products, we have uh, rates from zero up to 300 units of phosphorus um, in 60 um, pound increments. Um, so it, it really does cover a very broad range um, of, of uh, phosphorus. 
phosphorus rates clear up to the, from, from zero up to the extreme of 300 units. Um, um, basically, in a nutshell, that's that's uh, what we did, and looking forward to seeing seeing what we see at harvest. Uh, um, right now, it, it's very hard to pick out any treatment effects, um, but we're hoping at, at harvest uh, those effects should should start showing up.